Vsauce, I'm Jake and a wild Pokemon appeared and is after me. Wait, did you hear that? Quick! Behind the bar! Okay, I think we're in the clear, which is good because we are going to expose this sucker just like we did with some other deadly Pokemon. Magikarp, Magcargo, Blastoise, and Victory Bell. But this Pokemon's an entirely different breed, not just because of its type, but because it is the most popular Pokemon in the world. Pokemon number 25, Pikachu! Pikachu has small electric sacks on its cheeks. If threatened, it loses electric charges from the sacks. Don't be fooled by its adorable little face because behind those red dots are the source of its shocking abilities. When an animal is able to generate electricity, it's called bioelectrogenesis. Bioelectrogenesis, it's a fantastic word, and bioelectrogenesis is more common than you'd think. Electric eels, electric catfish, and electric rays are all fish that can create electric shocks to stun or kill their prey. In fact, the electric catfish can generate enough electricity to power a computer. <coughs> Inside all their fishy bodies, they have an electric organ that functions a lot like a battery. Within the organ are electrocytes, thousands of round flat cells that are stacked on top of each other, and each one can produce 0.15 volts. It is thought that this stack of cells inspired the very first electrical battery, the voltaic pile invented by Alessandro Volta. But some animals use electricity for more than just attacking. The platypus has about 40,000 electroreceptors on its bill. And since all animals produce electric fields because of the activity of their nerves and muscles, it is able to detect where its food is hiding. It's like an electrical sixth sense, and sharks have it too, most notably in the hammerhead that sways its large head back and forth searching for electrical fields. But let's go back to the electric eel, which can produce electrical shocks up to 860 volts, and according to the National Electric Code, puts it in high voltage territory. But then there's Pikachu, who can do 116 times that with the move Thunderbolt, or as it's called in Japanese, 100,000 volts. Which isn't really that deadly. Here is someone being hit with a three and a half million volt stun gun. And here's a 100,000 volt taser. Enough to temporarily paralyze you. Quick side note, if you had to guess, what would you say the acronym TASER stands for? It's all right, I'll give you a minute. Time's up. If you guessed Thomas A. Swift's electric rifle, then you are correct. The inventor of the taser, Jack Cover, named it after a Tom Swift book where Tom invents an electric rifle capable of firing bolts of electricity. So Pikachu is like a living, breathing taser. But why is it that we can be hit by hundreds of thousands or millions of volts and generally not die? Well, it's because the voltage isn't what's deadly. It's the current, the amps. Tasers and sun guns have lower amperage, so they stop you in your tracks without killing you, generally. It only takes seven milliamps directly to the heart to stop it from working. You could apply a nine volt battery to the heart for the same effect. Luckily, we have flesh, fat, and muscle to protect us from things like that. However, it only takes one tenth of an amp for electricity to be lethal. So then how many amps does Pikachu have? Using Ohm's law, we can figure it out. Ohm's law states that current equals voltage divided by resistance. We know that Pikachu's voltage is 100,000. And according to the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health, a dry human body has a resistance of 100,000 ohms. That gives us one amp, 10 times the lethal amount. Pika's volt tackle would generate even more. So between that and a thunderbolt, you would definitely be electrocuted. Electrocuted is actually a very interesting word. It's a combination of two words. Electrical execution, which literally means to kill somebody with electricity. So if someone tells you that they were electrocuted, they are either a ghost or a zombie. What they really meant to say is that they were shocked. Just like I was shocked to discover this little bit of information. Pikachu and lightning go hand in hand. When a group of them get together, they can cause lightning storms. And lightning is incredibly powerful and hot. A lightning bolt can have anywhere from 100 million to 1 billion volts. 
and be 53,540 degrees Fahrenheit, five times hotter than the surface of the sun. When struck by lightning, the extreme change in temperature can cause a violent reaction, making all the rain or moisture on your body explode. And that explosion of moisture can cause your clothes to rip off, literally knocking your socks off. It is estimated that lightning strikes the Earth a hundred times every second. In the US alone, it averages to 25 million strikes a year. The likelihood of you being struck in your lifetime is one in 3,000. Now here comes the shocking bit. Out of all the people struck by lightning, 90% survive. Plus you have the possibility of getting a really cool fractal scar. It's pretty neat. But if you're one of the unfortunate 10% who doesn't make it out alive, what would happen? The massive amount of electricity flowing through your body would cause your muscles to contract so severely that it would shatter your bones. What will most likely kill you though is either the electricity entering through the top of your head and frying your brain, or the electricity changing the contractions of your heart, which would stop the blood flowing, which would cause oxygen to not go to your brain or your other organs, which is bad. And when you're someone like Ash Ketchum, who is constantly around an electrically charged Pikachu, your exposure to lightning bolts is a lot higher. But so is your exposure to something else. Since Pikachu can generate electricity, we can assume that he also possesses an electromagnetic field. According to studies done in the 80s and 90s, people who worked in electrical occupations such as power station operators and phone line technicians had higher than expected rates of leukemia, brain tumors, and male breast cancer. So there's always the possibility that if Pikachu doesn't electrocute you, it might just give you a tumor instead. The good news is that recent studies have had mixed or inconclusive results, so the jury is still out. However, what is certain is that Pikachu is deadly. Pika is known to have sudden and unintentionally harmful discharges of electricity, which could kill you. Just a little static shock, like rubbing your socks on the carpet, can cause an electrical discharge of 25,000 volts. And coming from Pikachu, that would be enough to stop you from doing the whole being alive thing. If you spent as much time around Pikachu as Ash Ketchum, you would probably be Ash. And, as always, thanks for watching. Pika. Oh no. Oh no! No, Pika! Pika. No. Pika.